<gasps> Welcome back. So the three main programs that I use are Photoshop, Asprite, and Pixel Edit. And each one of them are good at different things. But for the most part, I'll just open up Asprite because it can tackle most of the stuff that I'm going to do. Pixel Edit is great for tile maps and then Photoshop is great for any sort of effects or if I have a ton of sprites that I want to have laid out in a file. Alright, so if you do buy a sprite, which by the way I'm not sponsored by them, I have a link in the description um, to get it on Humble and, I'll, and I get like a tiny little kickback if you get it on Humble. So if you're going to get the program, please at least use the link in the, in the description. I'll probably pin a link. I get a lot of people asking me, hey, what's the best size for me to, to start my canvas at? And honestly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter really. Only thing you probably want to do is change the background to white and then hit OK. So the reason why the starting canvas size doesn't really matter is you can just go to Sprite Canvas Size and here you can change the canvas size to whatever you want. And if you need more space, you can actually drag out these blue um, uh, lines right here or you can drag them in if you want to crop whatever your artwork is. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and press OK here. So the next thing you'll probably want to do is customize your setup. You can drag a lot of these windows around to change the, uh, the width and height of them, but unfortunately you can't really pop them out and move them. Um, a lot of people have asked me how I got um, my timeline here on the right. There's an icon here which looks like three sliders and you can click this and here you can choose whether your timeline is on the left, the bottom or the right. If you're doing animations, I'd suggest putting it on the bottom so you can see all the frames. But if you're just drawing stuff, I would recommend putting it on the right. Personally, I like this because to me it feels like I'm using Photoshop. So if you look over here um, at the layer, there's a frame here and you can create new frames and basically it just duplicates the previous frame. But there's just a white circle here. I can't actually see what's in the frame. So one of the things that you can do when you click the, the three sliders is here there's a, a checkbox for thumbnail. And once you click this, now you get thumbnail options. Unfortunately, it's right behind that window, so I can't really see. But here you can customize the thumbnail size. I'm going to put it to like uh, four. Yeah. And now if I click off, we can see the thumbnails. I'm pretty sure everyone likes to see thumbnails, so now you know how to do it. So since we're talking about thumbnails, down here in the bottom right corner, there's a show preview button. It's a little, ooh, let me move my face. So <laughs> right under here in my face, there's a, there's a one to one button and you click this and you get a preview. Okay, I think we can go back. But dupe. So actually, there we go. I'm a pro YouTuber. So here we have a thumbnail and it's pretty huge, but the cool thing is over here you can zoom in and out to make it exactly what you want. So we would probably want our thumbnail to be, you know, a little bit smaller. I'm one of the developers working on Dwerve. It's a 2D top-down tower defense RPG. Pretty cool, right? You can sign up to our newsletter so you get notified when we launch our Kickstarter. If you're an early backer, you're going to get bonus stuff. And I think you'll like it. So creating a new layer. You can just right click new layer and then it took me a while to figure this one out but to move a layer down you have to click the layer and put your mouse right on the yellow border and now you can drag it down so at first it was kind of hard for me to figure out how to move those layers it's a little different than photoshop and stuff so to rename a layer you just double click it if you double click it really quickly it gives you three different options so one is the name let's just call it bg for background and then the other one is the mode. This is kind of like filters. And uh, the last one is opacity. Let me show you uh, a couple of the modes. So I'm gonna create a new layer here above my artwork. And I'm going to just pick the color uh, red. Actually, I'm gonna go with blue. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put blue here. And as you can see, it covered my art. But now if I double click the layer really fast, this uh, last one, opacity, you can see instantly changes the transparency or opacity, whatever you wanna call it, of that. But check this out. If you go through the modes, you'll see the cool effects that you that you have built in to um, a sprite. OK, so I clicked into the drop down and here. I can use the arrow keys to go through the different options. And as you can see, some of them are pretty interesting. So you could get some pretty neat effects. For example, if you wanted your artwork to kind of have a uh, blue sort of tint to it, you could probably just go to overlay and now I could, let's say there was a night, a nighttime scene in my, uh, in my game. I could give the, I could give my artwork this sort of blue overlay like this. And all of a sudden it looks like it's, um, it's nighttime. So it's a quick way to easily change, uh, uh, the colors of your artwork. See what, 
see how it looks and stuff. So <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Okay, so super quickly, I'm gonna go through some of the tools. If I click on the first one, it has a lot of different selection tools. I'm just gonna click the lasso. And I don't, you've probably seen this before, but basically you just make a selection and then you can move that chunk around. Whoops, I was on the background layer. You could just switch layers and now <laughs> you don't even have to reselect it. And now I can, uh, you know, uh, get a chunk. This is good if you want to maybe copy um, some sprites and make alterations to them, or uh, you can do something like this. Check this out. I selected the sword and let's say I want it to be longer. You could just do <laughs> do stuff like this to modify to modify your artwork. Instead of redrawing the whole thing, you could just select it and then scale it up as a group. Isn't that dope? The magic wand tool makes a selection based on a specific color. So it's a quick way to recolor a section or um, delete a background color, for example. When you select the pencil tool, there's a very important setting up here, up here called pixel perfect. So if I try to draw a circle without it on, you're going to see that I have a lot of doubles. And what doubles are, is there are extra pixels that are unnecessary and they basically stack. It basically makes pixels stack in places that they shouldn't. And you can imagine it'd be very, very annoying to have to go and erase all of these after every piece of thing that you draw. Let me select it. It never has stacked pixels. And wow, what a difference that'll make to your pixel artwork. I wanna show you guys some cool habits that you should probably get into. So if you have a Twitter or Facebook, doesn't matter what you have, right? But your social media is probably gonna be a mixture of stuff that you care about, interesting stuff, inspirations, and then, you know, bullshit and stuff. But I just wanna show you this super quick. If you're not already following me on um, Twitter, uh, you should, it's at Peter Milko, link in description. But <clears throat> I wanna show you something. So when you're scrolling through and you find something that you like, you can click this up arrow right here and add the tweet to bookmarks. And if I go to my bookmarks here, it's basically a whole bunch of images that I like or inspiration that I like or people that I like. And I can quickly go here to get inspiration. But even better than this is you can make lists. So you click on lists and over here in the top right corner, you hit the plus and you just create a list. And then what you can do with the list is add specific people that you follow. So for example, I made a list here called pixel artists. And when I click this list, it now makes my um, Twitter wall or whatever it's called, just pixel artists. So I suggest that all of you do this. It'll make you a better artist if you're always looking at art, if you're seeing other people's art and you should be part of the community, right? You should be liking other people's pixel art and posting your pixel art. So like join in in the pixel art community on, on Twitter, it's there. If you liked the music in this video, check out Morty on SoundCloud, link in the description. Thanks for watching. If you like pixel art, follow me on Twitter and feel free to show me your artwork and I might give you feedback on it and you might even be in another critique video. So um, that's a way to connect with me. It's probably the best way to connect with me. And I'll see you guys next week. Dev life. You better subscribe. Please. <laughs> Please subscribe.